in chapter 16 today. And so if you want to go ahead and open your Bibles there to chapter 16 of John. And basically, you'll remember that after about chapter 13, Jesus' ministry got real private. Before then, it was real public, but now it's real private. And so most of what we see in the latter chapters of John is a private ministry between Jesus and his disciples. Okay? Um, and, and that's exactly what we see here in John chapter 16. Uh, Jesus is basically in a conversation with his disciples. All right? And so keep that in mind. That's the context. Jesus is in a conversation with his disciples. And basically, uh, you're going to see three rounds uh, here. Around one, around two, and around three, okay, of this conversation. And so uh, let's pray and ask for the Lord's wisdom, and then we'll get started in the passage. Heavenly Father, I do pray for your wisdom. God, I pray that you guide our conversation and bless our time together, Lord. Um, God... Help us to gain understanding, but also help us to leave here with a heart that's ready and eager to obey the truth that you reveal. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right. And so there in... Um, let's go ahead and look at chapter 15, verse 26. So this would be round one. And Jesus is going to speak of the conflict that will come to them from the world. Jesus has already told them in chapter 15 that the world's going to hate them, okay? Because they are followers of Jesus. And if they hated Jesus, uh, they're going to hate you too. And so Jesus has already told his disciples that. And now he's going to tell them that conflict will come and the conflict that's coming upon them is coming from the world, okay? So let's look at verse 26 and we'll read our way um, through verse 4. Of chapter 16. He says, When the Counselor comes, and that's the Holy Spirit, the one I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, talking about the Holy Spirit, he will testify about me. So the Spirit is uh, sent by the Father. He proceeds forth from the Father. And what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? To testify of Jesus. Okay? So we believe what we believe about Jesus because the Holy Spirit has come and has testified this truth to us. All right? So I want to make sure we get that. Verse 27. You also will testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you these things to keep you from stumbling. They will ban you from the synagogues. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think... He is offering a service to God. They will do these things because they haven't known the Father or me. But I've told you these things so that when their time comes, you may remember I, that I told them to you. I didn't tell you these things at the beginning because I was with you. All right. So Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure. Uh, Jesus is going to be crucified. And he's no longer going to be with his disciples physically here on earth. Uh, when Jesus Christ is crucified, he is taken down from the cross, dead, buried, placed in a tomb. Three days later, he rises from the dead. And after his resurrection, he spends 40 days on earth providing undeniable proof of his resurrection, his bodily resurrection. And then after which he ascended into heaven. Okay, And when Jesus ascended into, into heaven, who descended? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit descended. And so Jesus is, pairing, is preparing his disciples for his departure and for the Holy Spirit's coming. And one of the things that he wants them to know is that conflict from the world is about to come upon them. And he tells us the reason he's preparing them for this is so that when it happens, they don't stumble. What do, you think the, what do you think the Lord means by stumble? I'm telling you these things so that when they happen, you won't stumble. What do you think he means by that? They're going to trip and fall and break their arm? What? Their faith. 
stumble in their faith. In other words, what would be the temptation? We're followers of Jesus. Uh, but the world hates us. Was Jesus right? I mean, he's not here. We can't ask him, was he right? Was, is, all this, I mean, is all this worth it? Is all this right? Are we doing the right thing here because we're being persecuted for it? And Jesus says, listen, I'm telling you these things in advance so that when they happen, you won't stumble in your faith. You'll, you'll be prepared for them, okay? Um, and so he talks about the persecution that's coming. And he says several things. In verses 1 and 2 of chapter 16, he tells them that they're going to be put out of the synagogue. Well, that's much like what happened to Paul today, right? In our text in Acts. Paul was accused of bringing a Gentile into the temple. And what did they do? They drug him out and they beat him. Well, Jesus is telling his disciples is that there's a day coming when you're going to be put out of the synagogue. They're going to drag you out. They're not going to let you in the synagogue to worship because of what you believe and because of what you preach. All right? So persecution is going to come as a way of being, they're going to be excommunicated out of the synagogue. But he also says they will be killed. Uh, look at verse 2. They will ban you from the synagogue. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. So basically what this is saying is this, is that these disciples of Jesus are going to be accused, are going to be accused of being false teachers. Even though they, they are the true teachers, they're going, to be accused, they're going to be accused of being false teachers because of the message that they preach. And as a result, they're going to be killed. And the people who are killing them actually think they're offering a service to God because they are killing these false teachers. But actually what they're doing is killing the true prophets of God. And so Jesus is saying, listen, there's going to come a time when you're going to be banned from the synagogue. There's going to be a time, there's going to be a time when you are, um, you're going to be killed. And by matter of fact, all of the disciples were killed except John. All of them were murdered, martyred, except John. And John died of, an, uh, uh, of old age. But John was still persecuted. As a matter of fact, John was beaten and thrown into a boiling pot of oil. But he survived. And then was ultimately exiled on the island of Patmos. So he was persecuted. He was be beaten. But they didn't kill him. He eventually died of old age. But all the other disciples that Jesus is talking to right here, all of the others, minus Judas, who was a false disciple, and he committed suicide, uh, all of the others were, were martyred. They were killed for their faith. Um, they're going to be looked upon as enemies of God. And so these are the things that the Lord says. That you're going to have conflict and it's going to come from the world. And the reason you have this conflict, the reason you're going to be persecuted is why? It's because they love God. They love the Father. Look back at your text. Look at verse 3. What's funny is, or not funny, but what's ironic, in verse 2, they think they're offering a service to God by killing the disciples. Right? But then Jesus says, they don't even know God. They think they're offering a service to God, but, but Jesus says they don't even know Him. Verse 3, they will do these things because they haven't known the Father or me. They're lost. But I have told you these things so that when their time comes, you, re you may remember that I told you. In other words, he doesn't want them to be caught off guard. I didn't tell you these things from the, be from the beginning because I was with you. So the persecution is ultimately going to come because they do know God. The disciples do know God. Where the ones persecuting them do not know God. Okay? But Jesus speaks, and I love, about, I love this, because now we move into verse 5. He's talked about the, 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 the conflict that's going to come upon them. The conflict from the world. But now he's going to talk about the counselor who's coming. And the counselor is who? The Holy Spirit. So here's the point. The Lord's not going to leave them comfortless, is he? 
Yes, conflict is coming. Yes, persecution is coming. But you're going to have comfort through it. You're going to have the counselor with you. You're going to have the Holy Spirit to embolden you, to encourage you, to strengthen you. Um, I was talking with a lady the other day. I'm doing the book of Revelation on Sunday nights or Wednesday nights. And uh, I had someone send me an email the other day in regards to the book of Revelation. And we were talking about persecution. And this person was um, concerned that they feared persecution and they were afraid that if persecution came, would they be able to, would they be found faithful? Would they be able to stand? And I told this person that, first of all, no one desires persecution. That's kind of a, it would be crazy to even desire that, but, but we don't run from it. Um, but here's the thing. Every true believer, God's going to give them the, the grace at the moment to withstand, to stand in the face of persecution. We don't stand in persecution because we're able to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. We stand in the midst of persecution because of the grace of God that comes to us through the indwelling person of the Holy Spirit, right? And so we see that here. Jesus is telling them that conflict is coming, but then the next thing he's telling them, but the counselor's coming as well. So in the midst of this conflict, you're going to have the counselor. You're going to have the dwelling of the Holy Spirit living inside of you, uh, which and He will enable you to stand. So let's look at that. Um, the Holy Spirit will come to them from the Father. Verse 5, but, but now I'm going away. So we know what Jesus is talking about, His crucifixion and His ascension. He says, but now I'm going away to Him who sent me. And not one of you asks me, where are you, where are you going? Yet, because I have spoken these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. So they're sad that Jesus is talking about leaving them. Nevertheless, I am telling you the truth. It is for your benefit. Now think about this. They've got Jesus there with them. Some of us would say, well, it doesn't get any better than that, wouldn't we? But Jesus says, it is for your benefit that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the counselor will not come to you. If I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will no longer see me. You see, they need to be convicted of righteousness. Why? Because before they could see righteousness. Because Jesus was on the earth. Jesus says, but I'm about to go away, so they're going to need to be convicted of it, because they're not going to see it. Jesus is the embodiment of righteousness. So verse 10, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. And about judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. And that shouldn't be hard for us to understand. If the Lord revealed to us everything that's going to transpire in our life or what's going to transpire in our future, it would blow our minds, wouldn't it? So he reveals things to us as we can handle them. And it was no different, with them, uh, no different than with his disciples. He says, I still have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak of his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. And he will also declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything the Father has is mine. That is why I told you that he takes from what is mine and will declare it to you. All right, so there's a lot going on here, okay? So let's just talk about that. First of all, Jesus says that the, prere the prerequisite for the Holy Spirit coming is his, is his leaving. Now, why would Jesus say, it's for your benefit that I go away? 
Okay. Okay. I believe that's, I believe you're right. That while Jesus is on earth, because he's in human flesh, he's limited. Now, the reason he's limited is because he chooses to be. Yeah. But he's limited to, to, to space and time. But if he goes, the Holy Spirit will come and he will indwell what? Every believer. So every believer, Jesus can only be with this disciple or that disciple or this group of people or that group of people. He can't be everywhere. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he will indwell every person. And he'll be with every believer simultaneously in the same way. Right? So Jesus says it's for your benefit to come. Because, so the counselor who will come and he will indwell every believer. But not only that, it's also a benefit for Jesus to go because how, how is their sin going to be atoned for? His death and his burial and his resurrection. So it's a benefit for him to go because if, if their sin is going to be redeemed, then Jesus must go. He must die on the cross. He must rise from the dead. And as he rises from the dead the Holy, and ascends into heaven, the Holy Spirit comes. And now the Holy Spirit who is, uh, indwells everyone. So every believer has the Comforter living inside of them. Okay? Um, anybody have any questions about that? Or comments? Okay, so um, what's the purpose? Well, we talked about the prerequisite. Jesus must go so the Holy Spirit will come and indwell. Now, let me ask you a question. Was the Holy Spirit actually here before Jesus left? Yeah. The Holy Spirit has been here from the very beginning. You remember in Genesis chapter 1, and the Spirit of God was what? Hovering over the waters? Who was, it who, who, who was it who had empowered the Old Testament saints to do miraculous works? The Spirit. The Spirit. The Spirit. Okay? So the Spirit has always been here. But He hasn't, but he hasn't indwelt. Okay? So He's always been here. He's always been around. He's always been at work. But His ministry is going to be different now. You see, when He comes... As Jesus is talking about, he's coming to indwell every believer, never to leave. Where before, he would come and he would empower this believer. You may not, he may not come to you, but he would come and empower this believer to do something miraculous for the Lord. And he might stay or he might leave. That was under the Old Testament. In the New Testament, he comes in every believer, never to leave. Now, we can grieve him and we can quench him, but he's still there, living inside of every believer. The Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit of God. Okay? And when did he come to indwell? After Jesus ascended on the day of Pentecost, right? So, what is the purpose what is the purpose of the Spirit coming to indwell, according to this text? Well, He will accomplish four, a fourfold thing, a fourfold purpose. Uh, and you see that verses 8 through 15. So let's talk about those. What is the fourfold, fourfold purpose that we read about? Well, He's coming to convict. Right? Look at verse 8. When He comes, He will what? He will convict the world about sin so who, who is it that convicts sinners that they are sinful the Holy Spirit he convicts so the Holy Spirit is coming to convict he's also coming to condemn you see that in verse 11 and about judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged so he's coming to convict sinners of what? Sin, righteousness, and judgment. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. That's what he's coming. He's coming to convict us of sin, our need of righteousness, righteousness, and the coming judgment. And also by telling us that the God of this world, Satan, has been judged already. 
Why do I need to be convicted of sin, righteousness, and judgment? Because it is that conviction that drives me to Christ, isn't it? Because He is the one who does what? Forgives my sin. He is the one who clothes me with righteousness, imparts righteousness to me, and He is the one who enables me to stand at, at the day of judgment. Okay? Any questions about that? Comments? Well, that's what we said. He, he would come and he would impart and empower. And sometimes he would choose to indwell or sometimes he would not. Where now he, he indwells uh, permanently. Yeah. He came to impart power, to impart strength, to impart, to enable, a, in or, to, to enable an Old Testament saint to perform a miraculous task. Right? And he would either stay or he would go. And sometimes he would, he would go back and forth several times into that same, you know, that, that same person. Yeah, several times. But now he dwells permanently. Um, so he comes to convict sinners of sin, righteousness, of judgment. He comes to condemn Satan, and he comes to counsel the saints. He comes to give us counsel. I mean, this morning, I mean, I, I mean, I was up there preaching, um, but if 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 all you receive from me, if all you receive this morning is what I said, then it's like trying to stick frozen gum to a wall. That's just the first thing that came to my mind, right? Um, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, yeah, same thing, right? Is that, is that going gonna, gonna to happen? No. It's going to hit and it's going to fall. I mean, if that's all you received this morning is what I said. Right? It's going to hit and it's going to fall. It's going to hit and it's going to fall. But if you received what the Holy Spirit was saying to you, you see, there, was, there were two voices this morning. Three, I mean, the, the Word of God, my voice, and then there, then there was the voice of the Spirit speaking to you. Right? Encouraging, rebuking, exhorting you. And so the question was, is were you open to that voice? And did you allow that voice to minister to you? Because that, that voice was counseling you, right? And so that's what the Holy Spirit does. He counsels us through the Word of God. He counsels through us to us through other people or through, uh, or through, through uh, the still small voice. I know we're, I mean, Linda here, I'm glad you're here with us today, living out at Oak Ridge. And what's amazing is how, is the, how the Lord spoke to me about the need for our church to be out there ministering in Oak Ridge. I was driving around one day. I don't know if you know the story. But, yeah, I was just driving around one day. I thought I was lost. I thought I made a wrong turn. And I pulled into Oak Ridge, and I was going to turn around and go back. And I pull in there, and it was the Spirit of God. It wasn't an audible voice, but it was just as loud or louder of God's Spirit saying, I'm doing a work here, and I want you guys to be a part of it. And, um, and that was the Spirit speaking to my inner man, the Spirit of God counseling me. Um, when, I'm, when I need to make a decision between what's wrong and right, and, I, and I've got that, that, that conviction or my conscience is telling me that something's right and something's wrong, what is that? It's the Spirit of God counseling me. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, amen. And so, um, so let's read that. Look at verse 12. He says, I have many things to tell you, but you can't bear them. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you. He will guide you into all truth. He's going to be the one who counsels you. He's going to be the one who teaches you, right? That's why we believe in the priesthood of the believer. I mean, I'm here teaching you, but, but the great thing about New Testament salvation is because we all have the Holy Spirit inside of us, every one of us, uh, you have the ability to understand the scriptures on your own. 
Why? Because the Holy Spirit is your counselor. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. I mean, God gives us pastors and God gives us teachers, and it's important to have those and to set under those. Uh, but they're not essential for you to understand the Bible. Um, you can understand the Bible on your own by spending time with God and seeking to be filled with His Spirit. The Holy Spirit will counsel you and the Holy Spirit will teach you. Now, and that's why we say we believe in the priesthood of the believer. All believers have the ability and have access to God through the Father, through the Son. Okay, Jesus is our mediator between God, between the, between God and us. So we go to Jesus. But God has given us pastors and teachers to help, our, to help us understand and to shepherd the flock. And so therefore you need, the, you need a pastor in your life. Okay? You need that. God has designed that for you. So you need it for your spiritual well-being. But here's what I want to say. But, it, but, it's not, but I'm not essential. I mean, you, it's not like I have to be with you 24 hours a day when you're reading the Bible. And if I'm not there explaining it to you, or if, if, you're not, if you don't have study notes at the bottom of your Bible, you can't understand it. No, you can understand it if you just spend time in it, praying and, and listening to the voice of God. Okay? Because what does he say? Does he say the preacher will guide you into all truth? What does he say? The Spirit will what? Guide you into all truth. If it was essential for us to have a human being to help us understand truth, then Jesus would have never left his disciples. But the greatest teacher of all left his disciples. But he didn't leave them without a teacher. Because now the true teacher is who? The Holy Spirit of God. Okay? And so we all, if we're saved, every one of us have a continual teacher with us all the time. For he will not speak of his own talking about the Holy Spirit, but He will speak whatever He hears, and He will declare also to you what is to come. So, so the Holy Spirit, when He speaks, He's speaking on behalf of, of the, God the Father and the Son. What He hears, He speaks. He's not out there. He's not rogue. He's not out there doing His own thing. What He speaks, He speaks as it has come from God. So what you receive from the Spirit is what God wants you to receive. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Everything the Father has is mine. This is why I told you that he takes from what is mine and will declare it to you. All right, so let's stop with round one. That's as far as we'll get today, round one. So what did Jesus tell his disciples in round one? He told them that conflict is coming. And that this conflict is going to come from the world. And I want to say to you that we're not out of that conflict. We are disciples of Jesus if you're saved. And what Jesus spoke to his disciples then is still true for us today. And listen to me, folks. It's only going to intensify. Yes, we believe that Jesus can return at any moment. We believe that. But if the Lord chooses to tarry, then we will experience uh, persecution here in America. We will experience suffering. We will experience conflict from the world. We are already experiencing it to a degree, but that, but not to the de to the degree that it will be. I will say this, and I don't want to speculate, and I don't want to. All I will say is this: is that as something happens to America as we know it, that it loses its influence. As a, as a dominant nation, okay? And uh, that's probably going to happen sooner than what we expect. And probably with the things that we see going on with Russia and so forth, that the stage is already being set for that. And so w when those things begin to take place and the church begins to proclaim its message even louder, um, there will be persecution and there will be suffering. And you need to be prepared for that. Is it possible we may die before that happens? Yes. Is it possible the Lord may return before that happens? Yes. 
Is it possible that we may be here? Yes. So you need to be prepared. But here's the encouraging thing, is that you have a counselor. You have the Spirit of God living in you. And it is the Spirit given to us by God who convicts sinners, condemns the devil, counsels the saints, and glorifies the Savior or champions the Savior, right? And so you haven't been less, you haven't been left comfortless. We have the indwelling person of the Holy Spirit. He is our comforter, he is our counselor, he is our teacher, and he is sufficient. Okay? So any comments or questions before we conclude? All right, then we'll pick back up in John chapter 16, verse 16, which is round two of Jesus' conversation with his disciples. All right? And, um, and so go ahead and read ahead and be prepared for that. It'll, it'll be good. It'll bless you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word today and God for the truth that we've heard. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for being our counselor. Thank you for the wisdom and the guidance that you give us, Lord. Um, God, we thank you for Linda being here with us today, and we pray that you would, that she would receive a, a special blessing. And, um, and God, we just pray that you would continue our work out in the community, that we would glorify you. Like the Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus, God, use your church to glorify Jesus as well. In his name we pray. Amen.